to first professional vows. Let's pause for a moment. All of us are mindful of the fact that we too have been consecrated in baptism. The call to lives of holiness sometimes we fail. But we acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the Savior. Have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. from whom all good things come. Grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. As the old song goes, June is busting out all over. <laughs> and the missionary sisters of St. Francis are leading the festivities as they rejoice in the first profession of vows for our dear sister, Christine Marie. They're a very own candidate for Oregon's Got Talent. 
you should hear her sing even early in the cold January morning. We thank God for calling her to this Franciscan community and certainly we thank her for responding positively and so joyfully. St. Francis is indeed pleased and proud today. But then, when I looked at the scripture readings for the Sunday's Mass, at first I wondered how in the world I would connect them to this festive celebration, since the readings from the Old Testament and the Gospel speak about death. But the Holy Spirit, as he always does, quickly came to my aid in prayer by reminding me that the profession of vows is also about a death a death to one's old self, and a rising to new life, new life in Christ, as a person consecrated for witness and service. And so your sister Christine will be an important partnership with all the baptized, as together we embrace our evangelizing mission of building up God's kingdom right here and now. Consecrated life, my friends, is a precious gift for the church. And my dear sisters, so many present here today, your way of loving and working vividly expresses your sincere desire to belong to the Lord. You place yourselves without reserve in the hands of Jesus and of his church. And by your consecrated lives as women of faith, you give marvelous witness to the good news of the gospel. Now as the story goes, it so happened that one day, a very successful merchant was moved to seek the ways of holiness. And so he traveled to the hermitage of a Franciscan monk, a guy who was deeply respected for his humility and his wisdom. And so the hermit welcomed the rich man and invited him to sit at table in his small hovel. As the merchant explained the reason for his visit, the hermit prepared a little tea, nice hospitality in the hermitage. And when it was ready, he slowly poured the tea into the cup that he had placed before his visitor. And then when the tea had reached the brim, the hermit just continued to pour. Well, tea was now overflowing onto the table and then onto the floor. The confused merchant said, Father, your cup is overflowing. He cannot take any more. But the old hermit said to him, Just as you too are full, when you're empty, come back, and I will teach you the ways of God. We all come to that point in our lives when we find that maybe we're overflowing a bit, overflowing with possessions and schedules, with pouring more and making sure that we are as secure as we possibly can be for the future. It's precisely this situation which our Lord Jesus had in mind, I think, when he told his friends in the gospel that it would be difficult to enter the kingdom of God. Difficult? Well, much easier, he said, for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the Lord's holy presence. And we all can be rich in many ways, time, talent, and treasure. The Lord reminds us that we all need to empty ourselves of all that stuff of life in order to create the place for God to dwell and to fill. And left to our own resources, salvation becomes pretty much impossible. But it's not impossible with God. Sister Christine, I didn't know you very well before you came here, but I thought, like, like the way I went to the seminary, you came to the convent, like all kinds of people, probably just a bit too full of yourself. But it's all part of the human condition. Here, here you've begun to learn the ways of God from the constitutions of the Franciscan missionary community, and then of course, the example of your sisters. And as you embrace the evangelical councils in today's sacred liturgy, you're making a very clear and public statement that for the rest of your life, you prefer to be full of God's grace and not full of yourself. Several years ago, Pope Benedict stated that the witness of poverty, chastity, and obedience by consecrated persons like the sisters here and the brothers too is a strong and clear proclamation 
of God's presence in a language people can understand. And the Pope went on to say that consecrated persons are kind of like watchmen among the people of God who perceive and proclaim the new life already present in our history. Sister Christine, I know you spent much time pondering this very important step that you're taking today. The sisters didn't bring you into chapel the first day you got here and make you have some vows, no. You had to learn what it was all about. And like St. Paul, who spoke to us in today's second reading about God's plan for him and then his own personal conversion, you likewise have decided that you too, like Paul, consider everything as loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus as your Lord. And for the sake of Jesus, you accept the loss of all things and consider them so much rubbish so that you may gain Christ. And God bless you for, for your courage and for the depth of your convictions. Now in professing these vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, Sister Charlene, today you are clearly surrendering your will to God and to others. You are making yourself vulnerable. A word that comes from the Latin word meaning wound. And I think you probably already have experienced it. In community life, you inevitably experience some wounds. This isn't heaven. And at times, the wounds can hurt. Charles Péguy, a very famous French writer, once told a story about a man who died and went to heaven. And when the man met the recording angel, he was asked, Show me your wounds. The man said, Wounds? I don't have any wounds. And the angel responded, Did you never think there was anything worth fighting for? Sister Charlene and your beloved sisters in Christ and in Francis and Claire, your witness of faith and your labors of love will do much to empower our church in its struggle to build the kingdom of God. And remember, not everybody wants that kind of a kingdom. Too many of us want to be kings and queens in our own little kingdoms. But you consecrated women and men stand before us and say, no. No, it's the kingdom of God which must be first and foremost. And Christ, our King, inaugurated his rule from the cross, a cross which you revere each day as you remember him in his sufferings at the end of his own earthly journey. So for just a moment, let's consider the three vows that Sister's going to profess today, the evangelical counsels. Some of us might be sitting back and thinking, well, that's good for her, not for me. <laughs> well, I think we all have to remember that this way of life is not reserved exclusively to consecrated women and men. The vows Sister's going to profess this afternoon describe a way of living the gospel which is at the heart of the discipleship all true believers, but they do make little sense for people of no faith. As a consecrated religious sister, you choose to share everything in common rather than have personal ownership of material goods. In today's world, such a concept is practically unintelligible. Our consumer culture measures the worth of a person by his or her ability to acquire wealth, so you won't get a high grade from the consumer culture. You also profess the vow of chastity, a celibate way of living rather than entering into a conjugal relationship, a beautiful conjugal relationship. Now the prevailing message in today's culture is that we all have to be sexually active if we're going to be fully human, even if that means promiscuity. Chastity Chastity tells us something else about sexuality. Chastity gives expression to a unique way of loving and serving other people. Your chaste life will remind the rest of us that there is so much more to life that meets the eye and that our relationship with God, that relationship always has to come first. And then last but not least, obedience. <laughs> Obedience involves a real surrender, a willingness to place the common good over all your personal desires. 
I had to make a meditation recently, but I was giving a retreat. I wanted to talk about obedience. And then I remembered, I too a long time ago promised obedience to my bishop. And now I have a bishop again. <laughs> I was my own bishop for so long, I almost forgot. You know, everybody, everybody looks for freedom nowadays. An ability to do whatever we want, whenever we want, however we want, and for as long as we want. The revival of obedience reminds the rest of us that the most perfect form of freedom is the one that makes a true commitment to another person, divine or human, or to a cause. And your vow of obedience today allows you to place yourself completely at the service of the church. That won't make it easy, but it's what you say you're going to try to do. And so I ask you, my friends, are you resolved to unite yourself more closely to God by the new bond of religious profession? I am. In your desire to follow Christ perfectly, are you resolved to live in chastity for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, to choose a life of poverty, and to offer the sacrifice of obedience? I am. The Almighty God, grant me his grace to fulfill what you desire. Amen. For the honor and glory of God, I am moved by a firm resolve to consecrate myself more fully to him. I, Sister Christine Marie, vow for one year chastity, poverty, and obedience, according to the rule of the Third Order Regular of St. Francis and the Constitution of the Franciscan Missionary Sister of Our Lady of Sorrows, in the presence of Sister Anne Marie, Superior General, and my religious community, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, I give myself to the chaste poor and obedient Christ and his mother. I choose St. Francis as my model for gospel living in the service of God and the church. Sister, on behalf of our Archbishop, the Most Reverend Alexander Sample, by the authority entrusted to me, I accept your vows in the name of the church for the Franciscan Missionary Sisters of Our Lady of Sons. I commend you earnestly to God that you may fulfill your dedication if you unite it with this Eucharistic family. For Jesus, and of all the faithful and Savior of the whole mystical body, sanctify with your right hand this veil, which your servant is to wear upon her head for the love of you and your mother. Through your help, may what this veil signifies keep your servant single-minded and pure of heart, so that when she comes for the everlasting reward promised to your saints, you may lead her along with the prudent virgin the joys of the eternal wedding day. And as we ask of you, who live and reign forever, and proclaim that you belong entirely to Christ the Lord and are dedicated to the service of the church. Let us pray together to God the Almighty Father, to Jesus Christ, who is the inspiration of the Jesus life. For our Holy Father, the Pope, and the other bishops, that the Holy Spirit who filled the apostles may pour out his grace unceasingly upon their successors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace and salvation of the world that all religions may be messengers and servants of the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear For all who are consecrated to God in religion, that they may share the life of the Church and cooperate fully in all her works and hopes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear For Sister Christine Marie, 
who has today bound herself more closely to God by religious profession, that in his goodness he may give her a love of prayer, a spirit of penance, and zeal in the apostolate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, protect your family, and in your goodness grant our prayers for this sister of ours as she offers you the first fruits of her consecrated life. We ask this through Christ our Lord.